Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the council will come to order. I'm going to do voice. Uh, the council will come to order. Pursuant to Section 7E of the Open Meetings Act, this meeting is being conducted remotely uh, with an in-person participation option. For those of you in the chamber, please use the e-vote application to record your presence for purposes of quorum. Those who are connected remotely uh, by phone, uh, the clerk uh, will call on each of you um, in a voice uh, vote. So in the chamber, please use the uh, e-voting application. On the, um, those participating remotely, the clerk will contact each of you uh, for a vote vote. Madam Clerk. Is it open? All right, voting is now open on the electronic e-voting app, and I will do a voice vote for those online. Alderman Hopkins. Alderman Hopkins is present. Alderman Keene. Oh, present in chambers. Alderman Zalski Garza. I'm present again, Garza is present virtually. Alderman Burke. Alderman Coleman. Alderman Moore. Alderman Moore, Alderman Curtis, Alderman, Pre Alderman Curtis is present, Alderman Taylor, oh, Alderman Taylor is present in chambers, Alderman Rodriguez, Alderman Rodriguez is present virtually, Alderman Tabaras, Tabaras is present virtually, Alderman Cicho Lopez. Ticho Lopez is present virtually. Alderman Rodriguez Sanchez. Alderman Ramirez Rosa. Alderman Viegas. Viegas is present virtually. Alderman Mitz. Alderman Mitz is present virtually. Alderman Tunney. Alderman Tunney is present remotely. All right, anyone else present on the Zoom? I did not call. Uh, anyone on the Zoom? Anyone on the virtual Zoom? I did not call. Okay, I will now call on anyone that has not done the e-voting. Alderman Harrison is having technical issues. She is voice vote, yes, present. Alderman Harrison is a voice vote present. Alderman Sawyer is logging on right now. Alderman Burke is not in the chambers. Alderman Burke is not here in the chambers. Alderman Coleman is not on the Zoom. She's not on the Zoom. She's not in the chambers. Alderman Carlos Ramirez Rosa is present. Alderman, uh, Alderman Curtis, Derek Curtis is on the Zoom. Or Alderman Derek Curtis, no? Alderman Jeanette Taylor, are you logging in with your e-vote? Jeanette, Jeanette Taylor, Alderman Taylor is present. Alderman Cecil Lopez is on Zoom. Alderman Maldonado, are you logging in? Okay. Alderman Maldonado is logging in. And present, Alderman Burnett, did you cast your vote? Alderman Burnett's casting his vote. Alderman Austin, casting vote. Okay. Austin is present. Alderman Rodriguez Sanchez, did you cast your vote?
Alderman Curtis, are you on the Zoom? Oh, you're on both. Okay, we've got you then. We've got you. Voting is closing for quorum. All right, there are 47 members present, either physically or virtually. Um, <clears throat> uh, we have a quorum. <clears throat> Alderman David Moore. David Moore is present. Alderman Curtis, can you please uh, log out of the Zoom? Great. Uh, please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. <clears throat> Uh, this morning, uh, we have the great fortune of the invocation being delivered uh, by Dr. By Byron T. Brazier of the Apostolic uh, Church of God. Dr. Brazier. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, good to be back in, it's good to be back in the city council chambers again, uh, and to the mayor and to each and every one of you council members, uh, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we come giving honor, glory, and thanks for your goodness and your mercy on our lives. And we thank you for the gathering of those who you have set in place to conduct the business on behalf of the people. We thank you for their diligence, for their clarity of thinking. We thank you for the work and the diligence that you have provided for them to bring us to this place where we are today, a place where we can continue to move forward as a, as a city, where unity of the body, unity becomes a, a major ingredient to the success where there's so much division every place else. So we ask on this day that the unity of the body be critical to their thinking. Lord, that you will bless them in the decisions that they make, that you will provide for them the understanding beyond their own wisdoms and own capabilities, intervene uh, where necessary, and we pray that you will continually watch over each and every council member, not just them individually, but their families, their children and their children's children. Each and every one, we pray in Jesus' name, amen. amen. May God bless you. Uh, Madam Clerk, if you would, please read the call of today's special meeting. The following call for a special meeting of the City Council was filed in my office on Thursday, May 12, 2022, at 10.53 a.m. Dear Ms. Valencia, I hereby call together with Alderman Harris, O'Shea, King, Lee, Cardenas, Maldonado, Irvin, Wagaspak, Ramirez Rosa, Nugent, Smith, and Tunney, a special meeting of the City Council of the City of Chicago to be convened at 11.30 a.m. on Monday, May 16, 2022, to be conducted by video conference with optional in-person participation in the City Council Chamber at City, Count City Hall, 121 North LaSalle Street, 2nd Floor, Chicago, Illinois, for the sole purpose of considering and voting on an ordinance amending the Municipal Code of Chicago relating to redistricting of the 50 wards of the City of Chicago. The special meeting may be viewed via www.shycityclerk.com with limited public seating available on the third floor gallery at City Hall, 121 North LaSalle Street, Chicago, Illinois. Very truly yours, signed Lori Lightfoot, Mayor. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we will begin the public comment period. The council will now begin the public comment period, which is limited to a maximum of 30 minutes. Each speaker is limited to three minutes. Speakers cannot yield or transfer their time to another speaker. Any written comments that have been submitted will be posted and made available for automatic review. 
Our first speaker is Mr. George Blakemore. Citizens, the citizens of our global city of Chicago. The city council meeting is a special meeting. Reditch, what's happening here is that they are fighting over who's going to continue to hold these automatic seats. The black population have, will lose this race. It's over. The numbers, you don't have the numbers. So this is just a little bandage for, for to let some of them stay a, a few more years. They do not have the numbers. The illegal has invaded this city. The Asians, the Eastern European, Western European, and the Hispanics. They can vote in municipal elections, not even citizens. They get good service, contracts, and jobs. They get food stamps, housing, everything that a citizen gets. But the word is citizen, and the word is legal. These people can make illegal, legal, and legal illegal whenever they want. You black people will not win. And I hold you responsible for being a loser. It's just a matter of time when we might just help, be lucky to have nine officers. Today, the only black wars that we have is Michelle, Harris, and Brooklyn. All these other wars have high percentage of Hispanics, Asians, and whites. So you black people are losers. You know why? Because you wasn't a good leader. It's over for you. Over a million blacks have left. While are other people coming into this great city? The, the, the whites, the Asian and the Hispanic. Why are the blacks moving out? Because of you, black men and women. You had no vision. You had no insight. And if anybody needs sanctuary, you do. You're the only people in the United States that was enslaved in America. You are a special people, but you acting like you're nobody. I am somebody. My name is George Blakemore, and I love me, black people, and I love you. So. Thank you, Mr. Blakemore, for your comments. However, your time has expired. Our next speaker is Daniel Magan. Daniel Mangan is not present. Your, your Honor, there are no other speak, public speakers who signed up for the public comment period. This concludes the uh, public comment period. <clears throat> Next up, as set forth in the letter calling for the special meeting, the only item up today for consideration and a vote is an ordinance relating to redistricting of the 50 wards of the city of Chicago. Uh, the chair recognizes Alderwoman Michelle Harris. Thank you. Um, I provided an ordinance and a transmittal letter to the clerk which she's already read into the record. But if you'd like to read it, go ahead and read the letter into the record. Ladies and gentlemen, I transmit herewith together with Alderman O'Shea, King, Lee, Cardenas, Maldonado, Irvin, Wagaspak, Ramirez, Rosa, Nugent, Smith, and Tunney in ordinance amending the Municipal Code of Chicago relating to redistricting of the 50 wards of the City of Chicago. Very truly yours, Michelle Harris, Chairman, Committee on Committee and Rules. Uh, it recognizes um, Alderman Lopez. Thank, thank you, Madam President. Alderman Beal, Alderman Viegas, Alderman Tabaris, and I move to defer and publish this item. Madam President, I 
I, um, I disagree with that. I think that we can defer and publish this item only because it's a direct introduction into the city council. I believe that is correct, um, Alderman Lopez. Um, direct introduction uh, to uh, the city council. And so I believe that your uh, defer and publish uh, motion is out of order. I'm sorry, sir. I'm, I'm not able to hear you. I'm, I'm sorry. Were, were you speaking again? Yes, I was. I'm sorry. Then I appeal the decision of the chair. All right. <clears throat> the, uh, we'll have a roll call vote on this. Uh, the matter before the body is an appeal of the, chair, of the chair's ruling um, that a defer and publish um, of this item is out of order uh, because the uh, city council rules allow for a direct intro um, of an item of this magnitude um, to city council. So you, the vote is, a yes vote um, is to, um, to sustain uh, the ruling of the chair, which is a defer and publish is out of order. A no vote um, is to uh, disagree with or vote against uh, the ruling of the chair that a defer and publish uh, order is correct and appropriate in these circumstances. Madam Clerk. Okay, just like last time, so bear with us, those that are voting electronically in person will vote electronically. I will also take a voice vote from those on Zoom. So if you're in person, please vote with your e-voting application and remember to hit refresh, to hit refresh. Yep, if you need help, raise your hand and someone from tech will support will come. King, and can we please turn her microphone on? Thank you, Madam President. I think a few people are lost on what a yes means and what a no means. So can you I, just I, elaborate again? A yes again? vote is um, sustaining uh, the ruling of the chair that a DNP is out of order. A no vote um, is uh, disagreeing with the ruling of the chair that a DNP is appropriate. All right. Yes sustains the vote. Uh, the ruling of the chair, no uh, does not sustain the ruling of the chair. The voting is open electronically. The voting is open electronically. Please hit refresh on the Zoom. Alderman Hopkins. Aye. Alderman Hopkins is a yes. Alderman Zalowski Garza. Yes. Zalowski Garza is a yes. Alderman Burke. Alderman Coleman. Oh, Alderman Burke, you're on Zoom. Okay. Burke, you are present, and what is your vote? Uh, no. Alderman Burke is a no. Alderman Coleman. Alderman Coleman is a yes. Alderman Coleman is present for quorum and also a yes. Alderman Rodriguez. Yes. Alderman Rodriguez is a yes. Alderman Tabaras. Alderman Tabaras is a no. Alderman Cicho Lopez. Cicho Lopez is a yes. Okay. Alderman Viegas. Viegas is a no. Alderman Mitz. Alderman Mitz. Alderman Mitz is a yes. Alderman Tunney. Yes. Alderman Tunney is a yes. Anyone else on the Zoom that did not vote? Anyone else on the Zoom that did not? Alderman Burke, he is, he's on the Zoom, he voted. So we're just inputting the folks on Zoom right now in. Anyone having difficult techno technology, difficult issues? Alderman Coleman, she already voted. She's on Zoom. Yes, we're, we're inputting them. In. We have to put them in right here now. Okay, Alderman Austin is voting yes, is having technical. And Harrison is voting yes. Harrison is a yes, and Austin is a yes. Anyone else present that's having difficulty? Anyone else present that needs a voice vote? Okay, give us one second so we can put the Zoom folks in here.
Voting is closed. On the motion to uh, sustain uh, the ruling of the chair, uh, the yeas are 45, the nays are 5. <laughs> Chairman Harris, back to you. Thank you, Madam President. I move to suspend the rules for the immediate consideration of the ordinance and um, reserve my right to close. Hearing no objection, so ordered. Are there members of the, uh, the body that wish to speak to uh, the ordinance? <laughs> Um, Alderwoman, the chair recognizes Alderwoman Haddon. <clears throat> Thank you, Madam President. I rise in, uh, in support of this ordinance and we'll, we'll keep things brief, but um, I'm a freshman alder person. This is my first um, redistricting process. We've been going through a complex process during a really difficult time. Um, I want to commend Chairman Michelle Harris on, on your leadership, Michelle, in bringing us together. Um, I want to thank our legal team for bringing us together. Um, I want to thank our caucus chairs, um, Jason Irvin and Sophia King. Um, getting 41 or more of us to agree to anything is an extremely difficult task. I know residents in the 49th Ward, um, we had some robust engagement. I also want to recognize and appreciate the People's Map process. Um, I strongly encouraged all my residents to participate in it, and I think that seeing an even better, more robust public engagement process um, is something that we should strive for as we consider what council redistricting can look like going forward. Um, so really appreciate everyone's time and effort, and I'm glad that we're here today. I'm glad that we have the agreement so that we can move forward and working on the most important things for our residents. So thank you. Thank you, Alderwoman Haddon. The chair recognizes Alderwoman Austin. Thank you, Madam President. <clears throat> I rise in support of this ordinance for the fourth time. I am grateful that I've, I've been able to stay here for the, the changing of the guards in so many ways of these wards and maps and never to get at the end of my journey and 34 goes north. But the impact of the ward that I have served all of these years, the boundaries of it is still intact. And that I'm grateful for, but I am even more thankful that the Lord allowed my heart to say, the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the one. To be able to say this, step back, Carrie, and help everybody else. And that's what 34 has done. I'm glad to have been able to work with Alderman Brookins uh, we stayed at each other's throat for a minute. But to come out with what we have now is an even stronger ward for those that we both represent. I would have to say that Alderman Harris is steadfast. She can be a tiger, but she can also be a lamb. And for those times that you had to become that tiger to keep us on point, I'm grateful for that because some of us was getting out of hands, especially with things that they were saying. But for your leadership, in this instance, I didn't have to fight. And I'm good for that. For all of those that are here, those that are on virtual, this has been a task for all of us. Maybe your first task could be your second, third. Some of you all that are here could be third along with me. I know Walter is. This is our third one together. But for this, guess what? You're going to have to do it again, 10 years. So get your, your army together so that you can serve the people that you will then represent. In closing, I want to say to my birthday month colleague, Alderman Jeanette Taylor, happy birthday. For those that share our month, Alderman Pat Dow, Alderman Jason Irvin. It has been an honor for me to serve with you all in the same month. I'm grateful that the Lord allowed me to stay here 73 more years. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, uh, <clears throat> Alderwoman Austin. And I will just say, um, I think one of the um, through lines of this long, difficult process 
um, that hasn't been lifted up is the personal sacrifice uh, that you made um, to make this day uh, possible. So on behalf of uh, your colleagues I know are grateful, I just want to say thank you and thank you for your service. <clears throat> Are there any other members of the body that wish to speak to this matter? The chair recognizes Alderwoman King. Um, thank you, Madam President. Um, I too rise in support of this map. Um, as I've said continually, you know, one of our, our uh, main uh, uh, goals was to preserve protected classes. And I think this map does uh, the best in doing that, uh, raising Latino wards from 12 to 14, um, African American wards going down from 18 to 16, uh, plus one plurality ward. Uh, we've added an Asian ward for the first time. Um, and that is what we're required to do under the Voting Rights Act, which we all know is under fire, along with you know, our right to choose and everything, but that's a fight, not even for another day, but not at this particular time, we'll continue to fight that fight. So I'm proud um, that we did what we needed to do to preserve protected classes first and communities second. Um, I'd like to also, uh, as chair of the Progressive Caucus, I'm also excited that we did uh, the best to preserve progressive wards. Just have to put that out there. Um, I'd like to thank uh, Chairman Irvin uh, for his work on this behalf, and especially our esteemed leader, Chairwoman Harris. Uh, I just want to thank you for your leadership. I want to thank you for your professionalism, uh, for your steadfastness, for keeping us together, bringing us together. In the end, this hasn't been an easy process, uh, but true leaders, I believe, rise to the occasion. So just want to thank you for that. Um, and thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Alderwoman King. The chair recognizes Alderman Sicho Lopez. Thank you, um, Madam Chair. Um, and, uh, echo some of the comments made by um, Alderwoman King. Uh, it's certainly a critical and a very difficult time in the city and across the country uh, when Right, the right to choose is, um, is being challenged and rolled back when we see voting suppression uh, that is threatening our uh, ability to elect uh, representatives that represent the best interests of our communities and represent our communities in general. Uh, I think it's critical that as a council, we uh, come together to make sure that we prioritize the need and the dire needs uh, and urgent matters in the city of Chicago. So I'm glad that we are able uh, to come to a compromise. I think in terms of the 25th ward, it is really critical uh, for us that we recognize the work that was done uh, in city council to have a historic day and have the first Asian American majority ward in the city of Chicago. That is not a small achievement. And uh, I wanna thank all my colleagues to make this happen. Uh, also to bring back communities like in the past where fracture like Filson in the 25th Ward because of political convenience and expediency instead of putting the interest of the public. So we're glad that we're able to achieve that and consolidate the majority uh, Latino, Latina in the 25th Ward. I think having a compromise between uh, black and brown communities is important and a sense a message of collaboration in a deeply polarized um, time. Finally, I would like to uh, urge uh, Mayor Lightfoot and City Council to make sure that we honor the commitments that are made. Mayor Lightfoot campaigned on having an independent uh, commission for the remap. I do hope that in the future, and we've been working with Legislative Bureau to make this a reality, to have direct democracy in our communities. We are the only city in the country that it still does not allow residents to put referendum questions directly on the ballot, the only major city. Again, this is an opportunity for us to commit. So in the next census um, uh, and redistricting process, we do not have to see what we saw in this time. And we allowed an independent commission
to be able to put a referendum question on the ballot directly. I think, and I urge Mayor Lightfoot to take this important measure uh, so that in the future, residents and through public meetings are able to put referendum questions on the ballot. I vote an outright in support to make uh, this compromise happen in the interest of the public and the city of Chicago that needs it, but I also want to urge Mayor Lightfoot to take on this important measure so that we have direct democracy in the city of Chicago, and in the future, we have options and questions on the ballot that really reflect uh, the options that the people in the city of Chicago want to see. So thank you again for all our colleagues to make some of these important priorities in the ward a reality. But again, as, as, a, as a city, we do need to honor those commitments to make sure that an independent commission in the future and, democ and direct democracy is a reality in the city of Chicago. Thank you again. Um, the chair recognizes Alderwoman Lee. Thank you, Madam President. Um, I rise in support of this ordinance. Uh, I go on record to thank all of my new colleagues for all of the tireless work that was done on both sides. Uh, the one thing that was always consistent in all the conversations that I could tell was that this historic day for having the first Asian American majority ward would come. Um, and it is huge. So thank you for that. Thank you for allowing our community, the Asian American community, to have a voice and to have a political representative um, and to have the opportunity to. That's going to come at some point. Um, and I want to make sure that our community is up for it. And that does not necessarily mean just our community. That absolutely means across the city, uh, working across lines, across uh, racial and ethnic boundaries, as well as neighborhood boundaries. As I've had conversations with my constituents and, and others about this process, I know that there's been a, a lot of pain and I wanna recognize that not everybody was ever going to get what they wanted. I think uh, Alder, uh, Chair Irvin had said it best, um, if someone came out on top with everything that they wanted, you should question um, their motives in the process. Um, so while not everybody has gotten what they wanted, we are here and I'm excited to move forward. I thank everybody uh, for their work on making this happen. I, I look forward to this historic moment moving forward into the next session. Thank you. Thank you, Alderwoman Lee. Uh, the chair recognizes Alderman Cardenas. Thank you, uh, Madam President. Uh, I want to join my colleagues uh, uh, in saying something about the process. Uh, I want to give kudos to uh, Gil Villegas for his passion in representing the Latino community. He wanted to go last. Uh, he wanted to show leadership. Uh, he wanted to fight for his community uh, like all of us. So kudos to him. Kudos to Michelle Harris, the chair of the Rules Committee, for uh, being patient uh, as she could, uh, always sitting uh, and willing to sit with anybody that was willing to uh, be accommodating uh, to complete the task of redistricting. It fell on her watch this time. I was here uh, in the last redistricting, um, and it's always different. Um, it's always different, it's always um, has its clicks, factions, and ebb and flows of it. So I, um, I took that experience this time around and I, I applied it to, to what I knew had to happen and uh, in my own little way, I, I was um, somewhat helpful. Uh, kudos to uh, uh, Mayor Lightfoot for listening uh, and always being open to discussing her role in redistricting. And I think uh, there's a lot of press that talked about you know, uh, how that was not the case. And, and a lot of people don't know what happens behind closed doors, but that's, that's what transpired. Uh, that's what happened. So, so kudos uh, uh, to Lori Lightfoot, Mayor Lori Lightfoot for doing that and sitting down. And even though many a times she doubted, uh, she doubted us, she doubted uh, uh, the process. Uh, it was gonna be difficult. Everybody knew it was gonna be difficult, uh, but always in mind uh, that the city, uh, it's gotta move forward that the city uh, needs representation and needs leadership. And um, I want to commend you, Mayor, for that. Um, when I started as a, as a councilman, as an alderman, back uh, after the 2000 re redistricting, we had, we had eight members, uh, eight Latino aldermen. Now, I've counted, I think I'm number six right now in how many have, uh, folks have, have been gone since that time. And today, we count uh, based on this map, um, it's not up yet, it's not up there, but they should put it up so they can see it. Uh, 14 solid 
Latino wards uh, with other uh, significant majorities or significant uh, numbers in other wards in the city. So uh, what I can tell you is that demographics for Latinos are strong. Um, and there are other things that I think we should, should laud about Latinos uh, coming out of redistricting. Our community, uh, our business community is strong. It's one of the fastest growing in the region. Um, our children comprise over 50% of the uh, student population in our public system, our public school system. Our local universities are teaming with students from those public schools, um, graduating, going into their various professions, um, and taking stock uh, and being part of this city, part of his growth, and part of his future. So I'm part about that. Um, I want to finally say we are partners. We are partners in this city. This is why we're here today. This is why we have uh, avoided a referendum. There's no need to drag uh, to an all-out uh, conflict uh, with our brothers here in this council. We're all one the same thing. What's happening in our city, nobody wants that, nobody needs that. It requires leadership for us to sit down and, and take stock of where you're at and see where we go from here. And you can only do that as a partner, a, a willing participant in providing the solutions that we need. And that's what this is all about. This exercise is nothing more of our democracy saying we have an agreement, we have a way to go forward between ourselves. We gotta get along. There's a lot of disagreement, sacrimony that happened. We gotta let that go. Our city needs our leadership. Every night that goes on without that is a travesty and Chicago deserves better than that. So, Mayor, President, Madam President, this is what this vote is gonna be all about. The compromise, it's about the city, it's about its future, and the Latinos are part of that future. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman uh, Cardenas. The chair recognizes Alderman Cardona. Thank you, Madam President. I do rise in support for this ordinance, but I also want to, uh, with the accolades to um, Chairwoman Harris for her leadership and her patience and her understanding, and basically allowing us to go in and have a conversation. Uh, you know, it, at the end, we were having direct conversations and so forth, and I think it was very nice to have that. And that's why we came with a compromise. I also cannot forget about uh, Alderman Villegas for his true leadership. Uh, he continued to fight for the Latino community, so did us as Latino caucus. But as a caucus members uh, and, and non-caucus members, we had to come to a compromise. And this was the best compromise for us. But we will continue to fight for our Latino community, for our businesses and so forth, because it doesn't end here, it doesn't end today. And the thing is, we are going to continue to fight, but also we are putting the citizens or the residents of the city of Chicago first and not wasting away $2 million on um, what's gonna be a referendum. But let's put this behind us. It's not, eat, it's, it's not pretty but I think there was a great compromise so we could handle what's going on right now in the city of Chicago and moving forward. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Alderman uh, Cardona. The chair recognizes Alderman Maldonado. <clears throat> Thank you, ma Madam Chair. Uh, first of all, I also would like to join on the comments made earlier by my colleagues about our chair, uh, Chairwoman uh, Harris. Um, she was very uh, generous, open, willing to work with each and every one of us. This is my third cycle going through redistricting. Once with the county of Cook when I was a county commissioner, and two years after I got appointed on July 1st, 2009, uh, we had the most recent uh, remap, and now we have this one. And I do remember that 10 years ago, um, us, the Latino hawkers, we were rollover directly by the executive office that was serving at the time. We were not taken into account. 
we were not respected at all. And I cannot say that this time around. Uh, we did not see the direct intervention by our mayor, and we saw the active participation of our chair of the rules committee, who ultimately has the responsibility to navigate us through this process. And I, we can say all we want, but I do know that as I started working with the Latino caucus, and then I abandoned the Latino caucus because there was no a process of respect to what we were doing, at least to some of us, I could not say, I cannot say the same when I gravitated to the Rules Committee to work with the Rules Committee. I was taken into account, I was respected like every other member that chose to work with the Rules Committee. I wanna thank um, our uh, attorney, uh, Mr. Casper and Ann Schaefer that really work tireless hours in helping us uh, negotiate and, and draft the ultimate product here. And with respect to the Latino community, we have 14 strong, solid Latino wards. The alternative plan of having 15 wards would have been a diluted effort to have in name 15 majority wards. But when you take into account um, the, the, the voting age, I mean, uh, the, as we all know, we tend to have the youngest families in the city of Chicago. And when you take into account the citizen's age, which is a reality that we cannot deny when it comes the day of our elections, I mean, we ended up with 14 strong Latino wards. If we would have gone into 15 wards, we would have run the risk of having in name 15 total population Latino wards, but in reality, potentially electing possibly 12 or less Latino, Latinos or Latinas in the next election cycle. So because of that, I came to terms that this was the best option for us, the Latino community, and I am not 100% happy with what I got, but I guess that's the nature of compromising. I'm compromising, at the end of the day, nobody's happy. <laughs> That's why they call it compromise. <laughs> it's not a happy-go-lucky. No, it's compromise. Meaning we're not going to be happy, 100% happy. So with that, I support this, uh, this proposed map, and I hope that we have uh, a positive outcome with the final vote. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Alderman Maldonado. Uh, the Chair recognizes Alderman Beal. Thank you, Madam President. I guess I'm one of the few that's not part of the Kumbaya Club, huh? I'm, let me just say that this is not a compromise. This is a backroom deal map. Let me just say that when we decided, first of all, that we were having virtual meetings, I guess it's once again convenient for us to break the rules and have part virtual, part in person. But during budget time, we told one of my colleagues that we couldn't have a virtual hybrid in-person meeting. But when it's convenient for us, we break the rules and continue to do what we need to do. Let me just say that early on, I attempted to work with my colleagues. But I was told that orders were given to chop up the Ninth Ward. I know people are going to disagree and say, oh, no, that never happened. But I actually have text messages that say I could not go into the Black Caucus map room. Is that working together? Is that compromise? No, that's locking somebody out the process. Now. As we get locked out the process, I joined the Latino caucus who embraced me, listened to me, and then at the 12th hour, backroom deals, lying in your windows and everything else made people scared and start scrambling to go sign a map. This is not compromise. 
Again, this is a backroom deal map orchestrated by no other than Michael Casper. Now, let me just say, if somebody can find a text message or a phone number that says Alderman Bill, would you mind coming in the room so we can talk? If you can find that, that text message or that phone call, I give you $100 for every one that you can find. But we all know you can't find it because Alderman Bill was locked out of the process. And I guess that's what happens when you on the other side of the team. But it's not fair. There's nothing fair about the process. There's nothing about this whole process that was right. So people can say whatever they want. Doesn't matter to me. If you look at what they've done, Inglewood still has six aldermen talking about disenfranchising people. Allgale Gardens is going to take an hour and a half for Allgale Garden residents that were taken out of my ward, put in the 10th ward. It's going to take them an hour and a half to get to their aldermen. Three buses and an L to get to their representation. That's disenfranchising people. When you look at exactly what they've done to the 36th ward, it's a string across six wards. How is that community going to be represented? Well, again, I expect people to you know, come behind me and contradict the things that I say, because I understand the process. I know, you know, I've been around a long time. I understand how this thing goes. But I could not just sit here and listen to the shenanigans that is going on. And so, again, I never got called. I was never invited to be part of the process. And when I did go into the room, when I bombarded myself in with one of my colleagues, Alderman Garza, I asked to move a line. Mike Casper said, Alderman, you can't move nothing. I said, why is that? That's because he had orders not to move any of my line. But let me tell y'all something. I got broad shoulders, and I got thick skin. Tony Bill is going to rise again. So say what you want to, do what you feel is best, but I'm still standing with my broad shoulders and my thick skin. God bless you. Uh, the chair recognizes uh, Alderman Michael Scott. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, I too rise in support of this map. Um, hate to have to follow uh, Anthony Bill. Uh, and, and I, I hate to be the one to kind of contradict what he says, but that wasn't the experience in which I had. Um, you know, I'm here to offer my kudos to um, our chair, who was open you know, at, at any time, right? I, I, you know, I, I know everybody will say that, but that is, that is just the case. Um, and, and what I will say is, we as a caucus attempted to work together. Um, we, we, we had meetings. Um, and the reason that we were able to stick together is because of what you said, Madam President. Um, you know, our chairman, uh, Carrie Austin in the 34th Ward, uh, sacrificed herself for the good of the entire South Side, which eased things up for us on the West Side and, and allowed us to get to this map. And so uh, I, I don't think that I could go forward without one thanking. Uh, Carrie Austin for her sacrifice uh, and telling her happy birthday uh, because she is the matriarch of, uh, of this body. Um, but she is the catalyst, I think, that got us to stay together as, as a caucus and make sure that this map was ushered through. Uh, I'd also like to give uh, thanks to our chairman, uh, Jason Irvin, uh, who has led this caucus uh, unlike you know, past years, and I, I appreciate uh, him keeping us together, uh, trying to keep us level because there are times where we run hot and sometimes we run cold, and so making sure that we stayed level, and so I appreciate his, his leadership 
uh, want to also thank, uh, which is contradictory to, to what uh, Alderman Bill said, is the team, uh, Mike Casper's team, uh, and, and Ann in particular, uh, who opened up the, the room to me and, and to my colleagues at any time and was there for somebody who's, this is my first, first mapping process uh, to kind of show me how things went and, and you know, how to move things and how to compromise uh, on that level, making sure that I'm not hurting my colleagues all around and what they're trying to do. So I want to thank you uh, for your effort. Uh, and then I want to thank the entire body uh, because you know, at the end of the day, and if we talk about deals being made, it is very difficult to get 41 people to agree to anything, especially when you have to pull and snatch and take things that they may want. And so some people may think that they got shafted in, in this process, and, and that's okay. Uh, but what I would also offer is, you know, you have to, you really have to get in the space and you have to ingratiate yourself um, and, and be a team player in order to get on the field. And if you ain't a team player, you ain't gonna get on the field. And that's just how that works. And so, um, you know, Madam President, uh, again, I wanna, wanna say thank you to my colleagues, specifically uh, the chairman of the Rules Committee, the chairman of the Black Caucus, uh, and the rest of the body. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Alderman Scott. The chair recognizes Alderman Moore. Thank you, Madam President. I stand in support of this united map. First of all, let me start by saying when I joined this council, I came in and still is um, to be different, I'm always willing to even lose this seat to do the right thing because I'm not married to the position, I'm married to the purpose. I don't, my politics are not aligned with probably almost everybody's. Um, and it's the focus of the people. But I will say this, um, this body here is a body that is not perfect, <laughs> but it's, it's, it's good and, and trying to do the right thing. I can't think of no other um, alderman right now, probably with the exception of, um, and it's just David Moore, uh, Pat Dow, that could have carried this other than Michelle Harris. You gotta have a certain type of temperament. I couldn't have even done it. I do other things that I'm good at, but it took a Michelle, Alderman Michelle Harris, or Chairman Michelle Harris, to do and, and pull people together. It took a Alderman Jason Irvin to leave our caucus um, to get us where we needed to be. But it wasn't about what people are talking about, black versus Latino and all that. That hurt my heart as I constantly heard that. Process was, well, let me, before I get into this process, let me deal even with the fair map, when people talk about a fair map. And then you talk about people going out and talking to the community and representatives. Nobody never talked to me. And when I go up to my community, nobody never talked to them. People have their interests. And therefore, they pull people together that they like to pull together for their interests. And so the fair process, which was the United map, got 50 aldermen to say, come on, draw what you think your ward should look like. Not just in the black caucus, and we got together because a lot of us bump up against each other, but our first meeting that chairman called was aldermen, all aldermen of all races that we butted up against. Because I knew I was gonna have to give up something um, to Alderman Tabaris. I knew I may have to give up something um, to Alderman Quinn. We all butt up against one another. So she had us in those rooms. But when people decided to just go out on their own, and draw a full map for the whole city without incorporating everybody, that's where the problem started, you all. Let's, I'm, I'm talking to the people out there so you all know this is a fair process. If, if everybody would have came in like they supposed to, I can guarantee my map even wouldn't look like it is right now. But when you get the people that want to work together, together, we all had to give up something. And then came in, and worked with other people across the whole city, and then that's when it got locked in. So when my good friend Alderman Bill tells the truth and says they, they told him he couldn't move anything, yeah, it was after the games were played. <laughs> it was after the games were played. And so, and so at that point, it was locked in, and you couldn't move anywhere. I'm gonna tell the truth. I'm gonna tell the truth. As far as gerrymandering goes, there was, wasn't none of that in there. I wanted to knock people out of mind. Ward, I wish I could have. But we didn't do that. I said, bring them on. If, if, the, if they run, they run. That's what we believed in. Because it wasn't about gerrymandering. It was about, hey, serving our wards. 
Yes, let me tell you this. Yeah, we could have done some things different because it's not perfect. But and honestly, there are aldermen that have worked on projects and not finished with those projects. Yeah, I could have probably given Ogden Park, and I'm going to stick with me. I'm not going to point fingers at nobody else. I'm going to deal with David Moore. I probably could have given Ogden Park to um, Stephanie Coleman, but I worked hard to get that football there, and I want a new um, field house there. And so we're working on projects. So is it perfect? Heck you no. Know. But it was, was it back room, smoke deals, and all of that? Not at all, you all. And so know, know that we got the best map for this city, worked hard to get everything as square as possible, and at the end of the day, anything that's not looking square, it was after the games were played. And so I thank everybody, I thank all my colleagues, I thank the people that came on board to help get this to 41 so that we can move on and do the work for the city of Chicago. Thank you so much. Mr. Alderman Moore, uh, the chair recognizes Alderman Spizzato. Madam President, I too support this map. Uh, Michelle, you were awesome, girl. I mean, you were fair. As a guy who was here for the last map, who had zero, zero say. I want to let everybody know that, because 24 of you over here know what happened to me last time. Zero say. I get a phone call saying I'm mapped out of my ward. I fought to actually be gerrymandered into my own ward, but my ward was moved from my furthest northwest point last time to my furthest southeast point, nine and a half miles. No say, no support, other than, I'm not trying to attack anybody here, but other than Rod Sawyer and Scott Wagesback, we're the only ones left of the nine that were opposed to the map last time. A lot of people thought it was real funny what happened to me. I had no say, so on and so forth. Nothing, nothing. So yes, some people, not everybody got what they wanted, okay? If anybody here had a chance to draw their own map, we would never get it. We would never get an agreement. I don't think there's one person here that would say that their map is 100% of what they want. But Michelle, you steered the ship. You, you told us what we have to do. My good friend Chris, of course I would like a lot of stuff from him. He would like a lot of stuff from me. Jim Gardner, we had to work together, give and take. That's what we did, all right? This is how it works, all right? So this is way better of a process than last time. Like I said, last time it was a phone call. You're mapped out of your ward. You had to fight to stay in my ward, which was furthest northwest or furthest southeast, nine and a half miles. You could all check that. You could look the crazy map I had. The 36th ward was last time. You could look at the crazy ward that the 32nd had. But this process was a, was, a, was a great experience, a fair experience, really, I should say. It wasn't a great experience. I don't think anybody had fun with this, especially you, Michelle, because it's hard enough being an alderman with that dropped in your lap. I mean, the burden and the, and the hours. And the, if, you, if you talk to me as many a times, times 50, I couldn't imagine what that was. So, and Mike, you guys were awesome. You answer my questions all the time. Um, I don't know if I called you the most, the least, in the middle of the pack, whatever, but you're always there. And I didn't just call you 9 to 5, Monday through Friday. I mean, I, there was many a Sunday calls, a Sunday evening, Sunday morning, so I appreciate what you guys did. I think you guys were very fair. You helped, helped me understand it. You worked with us. Let us know how it works. But the bottom line, Madam President, I just want to really thank Michelle Harris for uh, steering the ship here and uh, running a great process, a fair process. And one last thing. David, you said one thing that I said was bugging the heck out of me the whole time. The one thing that bugged me in this whole process was the us against them thing. Just killed me when people kept saying the black map, the Hispanic map. That is not what this was, okay? This was a city council map. This was people working together agreeing. Black, white, Hispanic, Asian, period. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. It was not us against them. It was us all together coming to an agreement where it looks like maybe we have 43 votes here, and that's how the process works. But Madam President, thank you so much for letting me rant, everybody. I, I hope I didn't rant too much. Once again, Michelle, you were awesome. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Alderman Spisato. Any other members wish to speak before I... Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Alderwoman Dow. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Mm -hmm. um, I rise to be in support of this ordinance today. Um, you know, they say that growth is good, but with growth comes uh, growing pains and... You get stretched, and uh, it's not always pleasant. But I wanted to, uh, as, a, as an alderman who had to lose population, um, to shed population, 7,300 people approximately, to give to some of my neighbors and to help create an additional ward, 
Um, that, that happens, and you don't get what you want, 100% of what you want when you go through this process. So I want to thank Chairman Harris. Uh, she is a strong, strong woman uh, for creating the space that allowed us to come into the space, as you say, come into the space, um, to come into the space to uh, have some really tough discussions with my colleagues. Uh, the, my neighbor in the fourth ward um, and I had some tussles and you know we worked it out. Um, I want to thank the 11th ward and the 20th ward for um, their uh, discussions and support. But I think what this process showed me, Mayor, is the importance of some of the initiatives that you are putting in place through your administration. The Invest Southwest program, the Neighborhood Opportunity Fund, the Chicago Recovery Grant, because I think more investments in our neighborhoods, in brown and black neighborhoods, will help create more of the population that's gonna stabilize this city. So um, I just wanted to acknowledge that publicly and to thank, um, again, Michelle Harris, and our great Black Caucus leader, Jason Irvin, uh, for his leadership. And Anne, thank you for the countless uh, phone calls that you took for me looking um, at lines with some of my neighbors. Uh, appreciate your leadership as well. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, uh, Alderwoman Dow. The Chair recognizes Alderman uh, uh, Mike Rodriguez. Thank you, Madam President. Um, I just wanted to say a couple of things briefly. Um, you know, first, uh, I want to recognize uh, progress progressive caucus members, um, our chair and others within our caucus who've been working uh, together to, to try and, and come to compromise over the months. And we had a lot of difficult conversations. Um, and uh, I just wanted to recognize the intentionality and the, and, and the recognition that members were, were trying to work together and, and work something out. Um, I, I do want to give uh, Gil Villegas a, um, a shout out for um, trying. Uh, and, um, you know, we made a lot of mistakes along the way. Um, and, you know, history will talk about the end here. But, you know, throughout the, throughout the time, um, you know, we did our best. And um, the end result here, in many respects, is one that um, on the south side, um, particularly on the Southwest side, um, we're potentially looking at more Latino caucus members and we're looking at potentially more progressive caucus members, uh, which is definitely a plus. But as far as our caucus is concerned, over the last three years, we've done some amazing things. Um, we've amended the welcoming city ordinance. Um, we fought for parity in contracts. And just last week in the aviation committee, um, our efforts proved fruitful. And I expect that to be our course moving forward. Uh, thank you, Madam President, for the opportunity to speak. Uh, thank you, Alderman. Any other members? Uh, the chair recognizes Alderman Villegas. compromise that was uh, was actually finally settled um, is at 14. Now, that being said, I do question some of the 14 uh, wards as it relates to the, um, the opportunity to elect Latinos moving forward, but, but the future will tell, tell that. Um, you know, there's been a lot being said around um, the process. And, and I would like to say that as relates to Chairman Harris, uh, who I've known before I was elected, uh, she has always been the constant professional, um, someone that um, I respected for, for quite some time. Uh, and I want people to know that as it relates to advocacy, um, that is my job as the Latino Caucus Chair to advocate for our community. And I don't apologize for that. Um, I also say that um, we're gonna continue to advocate for our community 
um, as we're the fastest growing, fastest growing community in the city. And the census data came out, it indicated that we were about 40,000 away from being, a, 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 being a, a plurality in the city of Chicago. And given that the fact that the Census Bureau came back and identified that the Latino community was undercounted by 5.5%, one could argue that potentially that we, could, we, we are the majority. Uh, and then also you add the, the rhetoric around uh, President Trump uh, and the, the census question that talked about citizenship. Um, again, I would argue that, that if we're not the, the plurality now, we're, we're super close. Um, but you know this 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 process was um, eye opening, uh, and uh, a process that we took a look at and again challenged the 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 establishment uh, to make sure that we were being lit heard and listened to. Um, now I know there's been a lot of talk around the fact that potentially that uh, you know the referendum uh, had it passed. Would have, would have brought on lawsuits. Um, I can tell you that given the way that the map looks now, uh, that's still probably probably in question, um, given the fact that there are some wards um, that I, in my opinion, uh, and other lawyers will opine on it as well, that potentially will face, though this, this map will face a challenge. Um, but look, this is behind us. The reality is that this map is gonna pass. Uh, I won't be supporting it, but my community um, has um, been disenfranchised and, and quite frankly cracked. Um, but we have to move forward. There are a lot of issues that we have to face. And I think that um, history will say, history will tell that this Latino caucus challenged um, the establishment and uh, we did our best job to try to get the maximum seats possible. And the fact that we're gonna end up settling for 14 um, is, um, you know, we didn't hit 15, but we did our best. So with that, um, Madam Chair, thank you for allowing me to, to address the body, uh, but I will be voting no on this. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman uh, Villegas. The chair recognizes Alderman Urban. <clears throat> thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I, I too also want to uh, commend uh, members of this body for their hard work to getting us here today. Uh, first off, uh, Chairman Harris, uh, for your um, nice, uh, is it nice, nasty, or nice, nicety, nicety, we'll call it nicety today. Uh, but as she said, firm, uh, but fair. I also want to thank our, um, our, our legal team uh, led by uh, Clint Davis and Ed Sarpolis for, for getting us to this point today. Uh, furthermore, uh, I will call her contortionist uh, as she moves and works through our mapping process with uh, Ann Schaefer and our other council for rules, um, Mike Casper. Um, and I also want to echo a, a couple of, of things that have been said. Uh, first off, I want to commend uh, Chairman Viegas and um, Carlos Ramirez Rosa of the Latino Caucus for their work in uh, bringing us all together here for uh, doing something that is not, that is not easy. If drawing maps were easy, it would have been done uh, months ago. But we know that uh, this is a tough process. We know that uh, this is a process that uh, brings out the best and the worst in, in people. And uh, I think we got here today because we are the best of people here in this council. Also in this process, we saw sacrifice. Uh, the meeting that we had when we came to the realization uh, after much, much ado that, that we logically needed to uh, give up a war because the math just was not on our side with this and the, and the graciousness and, and the calm that Chairman Austin gave to our caucus and gave to our community uh, is something that I've never seen. Um, in this business, but she is to be commended for her, not only her leadership, but her sacrifice in bringing us here uh, today as well. It's a challenge. Um, City Hall is at 121 North LaSalle. 121 North LaSalle. 
not on 95th and Kedzie, not on Grand, wherever those other folks are located. 121 North LaSalle is the seat of government. And any business for the city of Chicago and the people of Chicago is to be done at the seat of government, at 121 North LaSalle. I say that because this process has, has taken some weird turns. Never in my life have I seen parallel, actually we had three processes going on over maps, but the law and the seat of government is here. People were elected, duly elected from the war, duly elected by their people to represent their interests here. Not on 95th and Kedzie, not on Grand, here. And this is where the business of the people of the city of Chicago is to be done. Now, I understand everybody wants to have what it is that they want to have. but we still must come together here to see the government. I don't mind people taking a shot. And as Greg would always say, the man took a shot, you missed. But to see the government is here at City Hall where the people's business is to be done. I'm not mad that our colleague, was disrespected in this process, I'm disappointed. But I think that if we can solve and decide to move forward today, I think we can be a better body. I think we learned a lot in this process. And to my colleague, I take great offense to say that one was locked out of a process. No, sir, you were not locked out. Sir, you sold out. You were not locked out. When, this, when the black community's political and social survival was on the stake, you walked away from us to go somewhere else. Why? We do not know. No orders were given to chop up the knife forward. No orders were given by anybody but to preserve the black Chicago, those were the orders that were given by us all because our people depend on us to deliver for them, not to sell anybody out in this body or in this space. And I want my $100 because I got it on text. But I also want us all to remember, we may not always agree on everything, but one thing we can agree on is that we have a job, we have a responsibility to serve the people of this city. And as long as we keep that as our North Star, we will be in a better place, in a great place. And again, I want to commend us all for getting to this point. I know it was hard, and it's still hard, but we're here today, and I'm prayerful that we will continue to do the people's business as we've been elected to do and as we've been asked to do and as we shall continue to do. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you. The chair recognizes uh, Alderman Beal under Rule 13. Thank you proceed. for allowing me to talk of, I thought he was done. I thought he was done as well. Oh, I thought he was done. done. Madam Chairman, Madam uh, Chairman. One, one, one moment. Yes. I, I, I made no disparaging comments to the person of what? him. I, I did not invoke the gentleman's name, and that's what the rule does speak to. So I, I, I think that if you choose to do that, I, I'm not going to object, but I, I just want for the record to be. I, I think clear. the rule is, is uh, broad enough, given the statements, that uh, Alderman Beale is entitled to a brief response. Alderman Thank Beale. you, Madam President. Madam President, I am demanding an apology from the Alderman of the 28th Ward because there's no stronger advocate for African Americans than me in this particular body. I was not the one that orchestrated the total disregard and total elimination of African Americans being part of the cannabis process. That was done under that gentleman's leadership. 
That was done under that gentleman's leadership. We need to vote for cannabis. African Americans still to this day don't have a piece of the cannabis process. When we talk about the budget, let's talk, Deal. Madam Chairman, I, I would like Autumn to finish Deal, on my point I'm of personal ask, privilege. I'm gonna ask you to respond to the limited point that was made by Alderman Irvin. We're not gonna do a survey and canvas of every issue and every grievance. I don't know. No, sir, I think you actually opened up the door with your opening remarks. So I'd ask you, under Rule 13, to limit your comments to the response to the statements that were made and not let's throw every piece of mud that we possibly can. Well, there's a lot we can throw. Now, again, there's no stronger advocate of the African-American com community than me. I have created over 1,700 jobs in my community and brought over a billion dollars of public-private investment to my community. So when people start throwing daggers, let's say, what have we done in our community other than create a skating park <clears throat> and say this is the greatest thing that's happened to the Great West Side? I take total offense to that, and again, I re repeat, I demand an apology. I don't expect to get it because I'd expect nothing less. Thank you, Madam President. All right, the chair recognizes Alderman Harris. I think it's time for us to wrap up this lively and interesting debate. Well, um, everybody. Oh, chair recognizes Alderman Lopez. He did raise oh, his hand. Oh, go ahead, Alderman Lopez. Thank you, Chairman, and thank you, Madam President. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to talk about this process. Quite frankly, we need to get, put this behind us. What I do know, not only for my communities, but for many neighborhoods as you look at this map, is that the residents and neighborhoods have lost. Listening to the conversation today where members here talk about, I gave up this, or I like this, or I wanted this, these seats don't belong to us. We occupy them, but they do not own, we, are not own, we do not own them. We are only privileged for the opportunity to sit here, guaranteed only for four years after we win an election. That's it. Now, we may disagree on numbers. We may disagree on process. We may disagree on who's the best. But let me tell you something from my experience. And I could say this wholeheartedly because clearly I'm not going to be in this race next year. What I can tell you as someone who was elected by a ward that was created 10 years ago from this body that was a hodgepodge collections of neighborhoods that nobody wanted is that the ability to lead a ward like that takes talent and takes commitment to be able to put dis dis disparate groups and neighborhoods together. You look at the wards that are on this map, it's like, a, it's like a Tetris game. And I understand that this is how it's going to be and I understand that this is what it takes to get to 45, I understand all that. But when you have neighborhoods that only have representation in one ward, four blocks wide and five, half a mile deep, where you're gonna have multiple aldermen trying to corral people together to address a local neighborhood issue, we've made that neighborhood suffer. We're gonna make things more difficult than what they're already dealing with in those neighborhoods. And where it happens the most is in neighborhoods that need the least amount of bureaucracy, the least amount of squabbling, the least amount of roadblocks to move forward. It's not going to be easy for many neighborhoods for the next decade. It's going to be a struggle. Even though there are commitments to work together and we say we're gonna to work together, we know that when it comes down to it, there are 50 minds deciding 50 different ways to go and that gets even more difficult when you get into the local neighborhoods where you may have three or four individuals who have to have a decision on the same stretch as is the case in Brighton Park, as is the case in West Englewood, as will be the case in Chicago Lawn, as will be the case in West Elsdon, and all the other neighborhoods that we've seen. And that's just the southwest side. 
I'm not even talking about the two Campbell soup cans connected by a string known as the 36 Ward. These will be the challenges that we're going to face for the next decade once this map is passed. So all I say to you colleagues is, yes, let's put this behind us. Yes, choices had to be made. And yes, to my good friend Alderman Austin, it's never easy to be the one that steps aside. But I know that if we don't address and, are, and if we're not prepared to support the wards that are created out of today, the issues that we continue to see plaguing our communities, the issues that we continue to see with downtown with neighborhoods that are out of control, that are not focusing on building families and letting their children run amok, that will be the norm for a decade if we fail once this map is passed. This body must be prepared to find new and innovative ways to address neighborhood issues when there are multiple aldermen involved because now multiple aldermen will be involved in a vast majority of the 77 communities that Chicagoans call home. So I say that to you, each of you today. It's possible, it will take work, but all of you must be prepared for what will come for the map that has divided neighborhoods, that has ignored con compactness, and it is not focused on neighborhood cohesion. Thank you, Madam President. Now, Chair recognizes uh, Chairman Harris. Thank you, Madam President. Well, we are finally here, and uh, I couldn't be more thrilled, more excited, and in fact, I'm going to miss y'all in my life every day. <laughs> but having said that, uh, I want to say thank you uh, to our caucus chairs, Alderman King, Alderman Irvin, and Alderman Villegas. Um, as this is my second map as an alderman, um, this one was a little different for me. This time, uh, as John Stroger would say, if you want to be the lead dog, you'll have some teeth prints somewhere. And so uh, today I am happy to have the teeth prints released uh, and for us to be able to get back to the work of the city of Chicago. Um, I also want to thank Chairman uh, Carrie Austin for her give back. Uh, we never would have been able to uh, distribute all that population on the great south side. Um, as anything we do as aldermen, it's all in partnership, whether it's the mayor, whether it's each other, but I really want to say, uh, I want to thank Mike Casper, who has been tremendously awesome and amazing in this process with us, uh, who was available to us and with <coughs> us and for us as we got through this process. But Ann, I got to tell you, girl, <laughs> you, that, Ann was, Ann was whipping that computer and she could remember the files and she was just amazingly awesome. So uh, Ann, we, we really couldn't have done this without you and uh, I truly appreciate the hard work and all the many, many days you spent in there with me listening to everything that I said. Well guys, we made it. And I wanna thank my white colleagues, my Latino colleagues, my Asian colleagues, Woohoo! big team effort y'all. Uh, to get us to this point. We were a rainbow coalition of people who came together and we are everybody. We represent the entire city. And again, I thank you. I thank you all for allowing us to, to come together. I wanna thank Carlos Ramirez Rosa for coming in the room and saving us and allowing us to come together uh, in ways that I did not ever expect. So I want to thank you for your leadership in this role, uh, for bringing us all together, uh, and for bringing uh, the rest of the team together. And I want to say thank you. Now, I want to salute you all again, because it's not about me, but it's about all of you. We work together as a group for the betterment of the city. <laughs> and because of the teamwork, uh, we'll save Chicago taxpayers. Uh, tons of money and a costly referendum. 
Of course, I wish we had reached this point a little earlier, but I thank God that we are where we are today. So you'll hear me say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, all my colleagues. Uh, I love you in ways and I have learned things about your community uh, that I never thought I would ever learn. And so I appreciate for the education and the journey that this map process has taken me around. Um, and I'll forever appreciate uh, some of you that I love and I care about that I just, um, y'all gonna have to hand me to y'all house for dinner because some of us, we've been together so much, I begin to think I'm part of y'all family. So again, I make light of it because I have sincerely, despite everything that's gone on, loved every part of this process. Um, it's taken me out of my comfort level on a lot of stuff, uh, on a lot of issues. And so today, again, my team, I say thank you. You all been wonderful. It was a team of people, of aldermen. They gave their, their day with me every day. They took time to, to meet with me every day. And I don't want to name because I'm going to start crying and get all emotional all about it, because I am. But today, City of Chicago, the citizens have won. And today, uh, we're here, and I hope Madam Mayor, that we can now vote on our new map. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, before you is an ordinance um, relating to the redistricting of the 50 wards of the city of Chicago for the next decade. Uh, Madam Clerk, uh, please open the voting. All right, again, all those in person, the voting is now open. Member to hit, please hit refresh for the vote and it will come up and hit cast your vote. Um, when casting. I will take a voice vote for those on Zoom. Alderman Hopkins. No. Alderman Hopkins is a no. Alderman Zalowski Garza. Aye. Zalowski Aye. Garza is a yes. Alderman Burke. Uh, no. Burke is a no. Alderman Rodriguez. Yes. Rodriguez is a yes. Alderman Tabaras. Tabaras is a no. Alderman Cicho Lopez. Yes. Cicho Lopez is a yes. Alderman Vegas. No. Vegas is a no. Alderman Mitz. Oh, Alderman Mitz is in person now. Okay. Alderman Tunney. Yes. Alderman Tunney is a yes. So just be patient with us as we put in the Zoom folks. If anyone has issues, please raise your hand. Alderman Sawyer, did you pass cast your vote? Okay, yep, yours popped up. Alderman David Moore, did you press cast your vote? Yep, you did. Um, okay. Alderman Vasquez, did you hit cast your vote? Okay, Alderman Vasquez just came in. Voting is now closed. On the question of the uh, redistricting uh, map for the next decade, the yeas are 43, the nays are seven, the matter passes. Alderman Kaplan on the motion for reconsideration. Madam President, I make a motion to reconsider the vote. All those in favor of the motion for reconsideration signify by saying aye. aye. All those opposed say nay. No. Uh, the nays have it. The motion for reconsideration uh, fails. Alderman Mitchell on the motion to adjourn. Madam President, if there is no further business before the body, I move that we adjourn. Hearing no objections, so ordered. This meeting is adjourned.